हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू सिविल निर्माण इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस हाउ यू कैन अप्लाई स्लैब लोड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर वी हैव डिस्कस फ्लोर लोड बाय ग्रुप ऑप्शन एंड बाय रेंज ऑप्शन ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस सर्टेन सिनारियोज दैट व्हाट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स यू शुड कीप इन माइंड वाइल अप्लाइंग अ फ्लोर लोड इन द रेंज एज वेल एज इन द ग्रुप मैथड नाउ यू कैन यूटिलाइज बोथ द मैथड्स both the methods have cer its certain pros and cons it all depends on your slab beam framing arrangements in the range option if there is one portion of the floor with different floor loads then other portion around it for example a cut out in the middle or a toilet slab in the middle the load applied for the surrounding slab has to be split into two commands so that the enclosed area i mean the cut out or the toilet slab will not be a part of the loop formed by the same command right so in the range method you have to apply your floor load by separate ranges if such conditions occurs similarly you may have limitations in the group option as well it's all depends on your slab beam framing arrangement all right so in the today's session i am going to discuss in which particular case you can utilize a group option or range option which method is convenient also we will discuss one practical field example of slab in that we have cutouts and how you can implement floor load with the cutout so stay tuned with us now let's first discuss now let's first discuss why cutouts are provided and its necessity so opening in slabs are usually required for the plumbing fire protection pipes heat ventilation ducts and air conditioning larger openings that could amount to the elimination of large area within a slab panels are sometimes required for your stairs as well as the elevator shaft as well i have provided few sketches over here to make you understand uh, you can check out this now see it is advisable to provide beams around the opening if it is of the large size however it is upon your judgment and as far as the load transfer to the primary beam is concerned it should be 45 degrees approximately i have shown a sketch over here to make you understand and the loading will be trapezoidal and triangular for the beams under the consideration okay now if you want to get more details you you can check out sp34 in that particular clause number 9.6.1 it will give you an reinforcement detailing how you can detail a slab with a cutout also one important note over here which is mentioned in the sp34 if you have opening less than 250 mm dia or size is smaller than 200 mm by 200 mm then it can be treated as insufficient opening now to the main point what we gonna do today so here i have considered a geometry of 5 meter by 5 meter slab for your understanding also you can see here i have a cut out of 2 meter by 2 meter over here okay so if i model that particular in stad it will look something like this right i haven't considered plate elements okay we going to apply slab load in terms of floor load as i have explained you how you can apply your slab load by floor load option right so if you have confusion with that and you you are here for the first time then you can watch my previous session in which i have explained how you can apply floor load by range and by group so those who have not watched the first session i recommend them to watch that video first link for the video is given in the description now many times students have asked me that if we go by range method or if we go by group method will it give the same results so here i have consider a problem in such a way that we will verify both the results so instead i have already modeled this particular two sample problems in which i have a 5 meter by 5 meter slab and in that we have a cut out of 2 meter by 2 meter so we will apply the floor load by range as well as by group method and we will verify the results now see here in this scenario if i go by group option okay 
what will be the difficulty so in case of group option i cannot deduct this particular area for the floor load option right now in the range method what you can do divide your slab panels right so first you have to apply your floor load for this range for this range for this range and this one so your floor load will be occupied for this four panels right and here you have cut out so you don't have to provide any loading here so by range you can do this now in case of group method it will be a slightly difficult why because when you group this all the boundaries will be closed right so if you go by group method this portion will also consider your floor load now what you can do so in, if you go by group method this method will not work right so compulsory you have to follow this option of range right or i have one another shortcut what you can do is see here let me just erase this you can go by group option and in the group option you have to divide your segment into two groups this is my first group right in which i will implement the floor load also i will create another group of this segment the middle portion and i will apply the floor load in the opposite direction right so for this particular hatched area my loading will be zero why because already i have considered a whole group in that i will apply a floor load and in the other group in that particular floor load in the opposite direction so my loading will be null in this hatch portion okay now let's check out that in stat pro so here for quick explanation what i have done let me just explain you again i have considered one sample case as i told you in the first case of range option see i have i have applied the slab load here in the first panel in the second panel third panel and the fourth panel right so remaining portion is in the form of cutout you can see in the plan view as well let me just show you if i go by loading here see so in the range option you can work out like this right now if you go by group option what you have to do is you have to simply select this press control g highlight now see as i told you earlier in the group option you can't go by this method as you can see here in the group option what is the issue every boundary is closed so it has considered your floor load for all the panels but to neglect the loading in the middle portion of 2 by 2 meter what i have done i have created another group of cutout which is only a middle portion right and in that particular i have implemented the load in the opposite direction so let's say 4.75 is the floor load right which is in the downward direction and for the cutout region i have separately defined 4.75 in the positive direction got it so that's how you can implement your floor load by group option now let's run the analysis and check whether it will give us the same results or not so i'm i'll quickly run the analysis i'll go to post processing mode click on apply see i have not considered the modeling part okay you can see it's a simple model frame you can model this just to show you the analysis result and want to cover all the aspects that's why i have already modeled this okay now let's check out the bending moment results so if i click on mz now let's go to results now to check out the results i'll click on a not button here 
beam results i'll click on maximum bending moment now you can see both the frame has same results right so either you can go by range option or by group option it all depends on your framing condition so here also in the group option what point you have to take care here every boundary is close and that's how, that's why in the model, middle of the portion i have implemented the flow load in the opposite direction right now let's check out the deflection as well so i'll turn on the deflection diagram see you can check out the deflection as well both the segments will give me the same results okay let me just turn off this yeah right so that's how you can implement your flow load command just for your exercise you can try out different groups and work out this also there is still one method left in the group option for the flow load think about for this particular geometry here that in which other option you can work out the flow load in a different manner okay and comment your answer right so here you have to think differently and apply your flow load by group right and if you go by range you have to provide individual command for your slab panels so i generally prefer to go by group option because it is quite easier you just have to define your groups and you can simply apply flow load with a single click now it it is not always the case right now let me show you a one practical field example here now see in one of our projects we have cutouts in our rcc slab see it's a 7 meter by 8 meter slab and you can observe a cutout over here right three cutouts we have now the similar frame i have already modeled just to show you in that how you can work out see so let me just take you to the ground floor slab view isometric view i'll take a new view so due to cutouts i have considered the peripheral beams as well okay initially my columns are 350 by 600 and here due to the large span i have considered a beam of 230 by 750 so see here so that's my beam arrangement over here you can check out this now if you go by range option so you have to define this each panel individually and it will be a tedious job to apply as a floor load right so in this particular situation i will prefer to go by group option because it will be quite easier but at the same time you have to check out the close boundary option as well if it is closing all the boundaries then you have to go with the other option now let's check out here how i have considered this in my design now see here in the model let me just show you a group highlight now see this is my group to apply the slab load as you can observe here here we have cutouts right so you can see i have not considered this beam in the groups also i have open this one element at the end why because if i consider this in the group it will form my flow load so as i told you earlier to consider the cutout segment you have to keep this boundary open now here the situation is different compared to our previous case right so here i have open this boundary and only consider the panels where we have slabs so when i implement the flow load it will not consider that portion in load c as the span is large i want to divide my load as a one way load so i have checked on the one way load distribution right you can check out check out ly by lx ratio as well this particular span is too small for me this one and here we have cutouts so you can see 
it has not considered the load in the middle portion right where we have cutouts so i hope this video helps you out as i told you it depends on your structural framing of slab beam and based on that you have to decide which option you have to go whether you can go with the floor load option by range or by groups so stay tuned with civil nirman keep learning keep sharing don't just learn software learn concepts thank you